Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I've now bought a Southern Cross 1 from Terra Nova as a replacement for the Fjallraven Nabisco 1 Lite. The Fjallraven was great, but uh, I found it flapped around a lot in the wind, which I think is just to do with the design of a single hoop tent, to be honest. So I've gone for this one, which has the exoskeleton frame on it. It was always on my shortlist and I wasn't too sure though whether whether to go for this first or whether to opt for the Fjallraven, but I had a pre-order in on the Fjallraven. So I thought I'd give it a try. The Fjallraven's a great tent, but being a single hoop with end poles, you've got that whole, what I would call an issue or a problem. Um, a lot of people wouldn't agree with me in terms of those type of tents. They tend to be a bit flappy in high winds, which for me is not such a good sleep. Um, so I've opted for this one. As you can see, the exoskeleton on the outside is great in terms of gives you a much tauter pitch. And they've supplemented that with some additional pegging points just to try and avoid too much flapping because that's quite a large area of nylon there as you can see so it might be a wee bit sensitive to the direction of the wind but we'll see how it goes if I take you just round I'll give you a quick walk round I really wanted to add just a wee bit more information and an initial assessment to some of the other information that's out there on YouTube uh, people like Ray at Renegade Scott's done some great reviews on it and already used it I've yet to use this one but I just thought I'd give some initial observations I really like the quick clip system which is a wee bit like some of the Hilliberg type clips where it just clips on externally really like that the additional blue pole in the middle there should give a lot more stability I like Terra Nova's guys because they tend to use these wee um, Dyneema thin lines which are very light strangely enough though they then spoil it by giving you what I'd call a fairly low rent and hefty peg I think they could probably do a wee bit better with something more high tech there possibly with built in pullers there's a vent at either end, as you probably know, and it's quite low, and you'll notice there's no corresponding top vent. So my main concern with this tent actually is I think will be condensation, because I think you'll have to vent it quite well to try and avoid the um, problems of condensation on still nights. The fly sheet comes down a long way, I'm going to try and unclip this for you, if I can, and I'll just try and zip this up, just to show you what I mean. What I've done is, this is quite a smart idea, they've got a little buckle that allows you to peg back the um, fly sheet at the base here, so you can increase the amount of airflow, or possibly do that when it's cooking, and there's also, to be fair, a two-way zip at the top here, so you can open and vent to some extent, but this rain cover is so tight that the amount of air you'll get through here will be limited compared to, say, the Acto, which has got a far better venting system, as does the Fjallrav and Abisco. Um, I'll just pop this out of the way. You can, you, the other thing which is a bit strange I think is the um, these clips, that's how you basically pin back the door. There's a couple of them actually where you can do it. That's great but when you're on the inside that then becomes fairly awkward to unclip and close your door in foul weather. So although it's quick, it's not so quick once you're on the inner. Or inside I should say, cooking. Let me just pop you inside here and have a wee look. <sighs> Right, observations about the inside, uh, plenty of room for cooking and storage and head height is actually pretty good for me, I'm 5'8", I think it's 88 centimetres which is actually quite comfortable for me to sit up. The only criticism I really have on the inside is at either end it's fairly narrow and fairly low so head and foot room is limited, on the Abisco it's a lot better. Um, the depth of the actual inner tent at the centre point where you've got a couple of storage pockets that's pretty good, so that's alright it's just that the ends themselves are a bit narrow and you can see these little pop down vents where you can increase the airflow uh, which is good, I think we'll definitely need it these will probably open most of the time because I suspect, as I said, condensation is going to be a big issue there is a fully mesh part to the upper part of the door which you cannot seal which in some ways for a winter tent seems a bit strange to me um, you'd think you'd be able to seal the whole inner so that it's basically all this kind of white nylon anyway these are just initial observations we'll give it a wee go and I'll report back with some more information on it and the other thing I should mention is there's very few spares I think there's a spare pole section no spare pegs no repair kit so again, maybe not as comprehensively equipped as the Fjallraven. 
but the design I think is mainly the key thing I want to try. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll put up another report once we're actually using it out in the wilds. Cheers just now.